Shalom. Uh, first off, I give in all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahushai, Ba'ashim, Rechakadash. That's all praises to the Heavenly Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well and who has taught us this truth. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the tabernacle of David, Saka Dawada, whom Yahweh Bashin Yahshai Bashin Rechakadash is raising up in these last days. Shalom. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to start these precepts. This is Matthew chapter 10, verse 35. Um, Slacks, 34. Think not that I'm to come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. All right. And this is red letter. Yahweh Shai um, is come to send a sword and not peace. All right. Verse 35. For I'm come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. All right. And this is one of the first things you experiences, experience when you first come in the truth. All right. Variance. All right. Uh, discrepancies, differences between your mother and your father. All right. Your, your parents in the flesh. All right. Verse 36. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Foe, another word for foe is enemy. All right. Verse 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. All right. So if you love um, your own parents more than you love this word, because Yahweh Shai is known as the word, and this is Yahweh Shai speaking, then you're not worthy of of salvation, you're not worthy of uh, being a disciple, a true follower, a true believer. All right, and uh, I just want to get the spiritual aspect of this because um, this word is 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 uh, synonymous with a woman. All right, this word is is synonymous uh, with a woman, and the first thing you do when you come to this truth, you leave your parents and you cleave unto this woman. All right. So let's get uh, Genesis. This is Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24. Uh, let's start at 23. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. All right. So naturally, you know, when you become a man, you leave your father and your mother, and what? You cleave onto your woman. You know, you cleave onto her, you pop her, you know, have children with her. In this truth, when you first wake up to this knowledge, you leave your father and your mother, and you cleave onto, uh, on the word, on the scriptures. You're reading the scriptures daily, you're watching videos daily, breaking bread with brothers daily, all right? Okay? Now, from there... I'm gonna go get um I'm gonna get it again in Ezra's because it was quoted in Ezra's. Um when uh the king asked for uh three wise sayings and uh they came up with three uh wise sayings. This was part of that wise saying. This is uh first Ezra's four and twenty. A man leaveth his own father that brought him up. In his own country and cleaveth unto his wife. All right. So when you come in this truth, you forsake all and cleave on cleave unto your wife. That's why the disciples, they said in the book of Matthew, the 19th chapter. All right. They said to uh Yahushai, this is what uh Peter said. Um uh, Salakia. This is Matthew 19, 27. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have thereof? All right? And how shall I... So Peter said he forsaken all, forsook mother, mother and father, and cleaved unto you. How was shy? And that's what we're doing right now. We forsake, forsook the word, uh, forsook our the world. We forsook the world and are cleaving unto the word. All right? Verse 28. It says, And Yahweh shall I said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me and the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, 
You also shall sit upon 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. All right. So you're going to receive salvation for doing so. All right. And verse 29. And everyone that has forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. All right. That's the fruit. All right. So uh, from there, we're going to go to the book of Sirach. This is Sirach chapter six. Verse uh, 18, my son, gather instruction from thy youth up, so shall thou find wisdom till thine old age. All right. So we're talking about wisdom, right? But when you get to verse 19, it says, come unto her. So it's uh, comparing wisdom to uh, a female, a woman, right? A wife. And um, the ultimate form of wisdom is these, script is these scriptures, is the word, right? So it says, come unto her. As that as one that ploweth and soweth, and wait for her good fruits, for thou shalt not toil much in laboring about her, but thou shalt eat of her fruits right soon. So Peter said, Lord, we forsaken all which shall receive thereof. Salvation, all right? That's the fruit. All right. That's the fruit that you're gonna receive um for forsaking the world and cleaving unto the and cleaving unto the unto the truth. All right? That's the fruit you're gonna receive. And you wanna uh, think of it from a physical aspect when you cleave onto your wife the fruit you receive is children you're popping her right you're toiling you're laboring you're popping her you're getting into her and what happens children come out you, you enjoy it you, you're gonna eat of the fruit throughout the children your children come out all right same thing with this word you forsake the world you cleave onto this word you toil you labor you pop her and what comes out salvation all right the kingdom of heaven Okay, that's why it says, um, let me get this real quick. It says in the book of Proverbs. Chapter five, start the first verse. It says, so we know my son, attend unto my wisdom and bow thine ear to my understanding. All right. So this whole scripture is talking about wisdom. All right. This whole uh, chapter is talking about wisdom. But I'm going to jump down to 18 and 19 verse. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times and be thou ravished always with her love. All right. And this is talking about wisdom. All right. You're supposed to be constantly ravished uh, with her love, constantly, um, you know, enjoying her breasts and popping her. All right. And this uh, and now and, and this this is wisdom. This is talking about the word. It's talking about the truth. All right. So um, I'm going to go back to Sirach six. Uh, verse uh, 20. She is very unpleasant to the unlearned. He that is without understanding will not remain with her. All right. She will lie upon him as a mighty stone of trial. And he will cast her from him, or it be long. For wisdom is according to her name, and she is not manifest unto many. All right, so verse 22 puts the nail on the, on the, on the head about wisdom being a female. But yeah, this was just a little quick video. I just wanted to, you know, bring out the spiritual correlation of how uh, this word is like a wife. It's like a woman, right? And we're supposed to cleave unto her, right? And forsake the world, Okay. So the woman was edifying, call Allah, Yahweh Bashin Yah Shai, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Shalom to the elect, Shalom.